The House will come to order. The Chair is pleased to introduce the President of the Maine State Senate, Senator Troy D. Jackson of Allagash, and honorable members of the Maine State Senate. The convention will come to order. The chair recognizes the senator from Rustic, Senator Carpenter. Mr. Chairman, I present a con convention order and move its passage. The senator from Rustic, Senator Carpenter, presents a convention order and moves its passage. The secretary will read the order. Ordered that a committee be appointed to wait upon the honorable associate justices of the Supreme Judicial Court the Chief Justice and Justices of the Maine Superior Court, the Chief Judge and Judges of the District Court, the Chief Judge of the District Court, and the Federal Judges, inviting them to attend the convention which was convened for the purpose of administering to the Honorable Janet Trafton Mills, Governor-elect, the oaths required by the Constitution to qualify her to enter upon the discharge of her official duties. Is it the pleasure of the convention that the order receive passage? It's a vote. The chair will appoint the following. The senator from Aroostook, Senator Carpenter. The senator from Kennebec, Senator Bellows. The senator from Oxford, Senator Kime. The representative from Saco, Representative Bailey. The representative from Kennebec, Representative Babbage. The representative from Bangor, Representative Cardone. The representative from South Portland, Representative Reckitt. The representative from Portland, Representative Talbot Ross. The representative from Gardner, Representative Harnett, the representative from Vassalboro, Representative Bradstreet, the representative from Caribou, Representative DeVoe, the representative from Hamden, Representative Hagen, and the representative from Friendship, Representative Evangelos. The chair would ask that the committee form to discharge his duties. The sergeant at arms will escort the committee to discharge their duties.
Chairman. The Chair recognizes the Senator from Aroostook, Senator Carpenter. Mr. Chairman, we have delivered the message with which we were charged and are pleased to report that the honorable members of the judiciary will attend forthwith. The Chair hears the message and thanks the messenger. The Chair is pleased to welcome to the Joint Convention members of the clergy and tribal representative. The Reverend Kevin Lewis, Senior Pastor, Green Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church in Portland, Ambassador Molly and Dana of the Wabanaki Tribes of Maine, Rebecca Erica Ash of Temple Beth El in Augusta, and Father Frank Murray. Pastor St. Paul, the Apostle Parish in Bangor. <laughs> the Chair is also pleased to recognize the nominees of the Governor's Cabinet and their guests.
The chair is pleased to recognize the constitutional officers elect in the state auditor of the state of Maine, the Honorable Matthew Dunlap, Secretary of State. The Honorable Aaron Fry, Attorney General elect. The Honorable Henry Beck, Treasurer elect. And the Honorable Paula Buckley, Auditor. The Chair is very pleased to welcome former Governor John Baldacci and his wife Karen Baldacci, Governor Joseph Brennan and his wife Connie Brennan, and Governor Kenneth Curtis and Pauline Curtis. The Chair is pleased to welcome to the Joint Convention family members of the Governor-elect. The Chair recognizes the Senator from Cumberland, Senator Breen. Mr. Chair, I present a convention order and move its passage. The Senator from Cumberland, Senator Breen, presents a convention order and moves its passage. The Secretary will read the order. Ordered, ordered that a committee be appointed to wait upon the Honorable Janet Trafton Mills, Governor-elect, and inform her that the two branches of the legislature are in convention assembled ready to administer to her the oaths required by the Constitution to qualify her to enter upon the discharge of her official duties and receive such communication as she may be pleased to make. Is it the pleasure of the Convention that this order receive passage? It's a vote. The Chair will appoint the following, the Senator from Cumberland, Senator Breen, 
the Senator from Oxford, Senator Hamper, the Senator from Androscoggin, Senator Libby, the Senator from Sagadahawk, Senator Vitelli, the Senator from Lincoln, Senator Dow, the Senator from Androscoggin, Senator Timberlake, the Representative from Eagle Lake, Representative Martin, the Representative from Waterford, Representative Millet, the Representative from Portland, Representative Moonen, the Representative from Biddeford, Representative Fecto, the Representative from Oxford, Representative Dillingham, and the Representative from Presque Isle, Representative Stewart. The Chair would ask that the committee form to discharge its duties. The Sergeant at Arms will escort the committee. The convention may seat. Mr. Chairman. The Chair recognizes the Senator from Cumberland, Senator Breen. Mr. Chairman, we have delivered the message with which we were charged and are pleased to report that the Governor-elect will attend forthwith. <laughs> The chair hears the message and thanks the messenger.
Please remain standing for the presentation and posting of colors by the Maine National Guard, followed by Alan Eager Reynaza of Portland, who will sing the national anthem. dawn's early light what oh, so proudly we hailed at ah, the twilight last gleaming whose brush stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets wriggling the bombs burned Singing air gave proof through the night that a flag was seen there. Oh, say, does the star spangled banner yet wave? O'er the land and of the free and the home of the brave, the brave.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we'll now have the invocation by the Reverend Kevin, Kenneth Lewis, Ambassador Molly and Dana, and Rabbi Eric Ash. I rise and stand before this august body to offer prayer on the cusp of the bicentennial of Maine statehood, the dawning of this historic inauguration of Janet T. Mills, the first woman elected governor in Maine's 199-year history of statehood. I pray at this historic moment as an African-American man, Chappaquiddick Wampanoag Native American citizen. I pray as an ordained elder of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church in America founded in 1792, the church home of James Varick and Alexander Walters, of Stephen Gill Spotswood, the church of Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman. I pray with earnest hope and expectancy that the promises of Maine's constitutional preamble be fulfilled, that we, the people of Maine, in order to establish justice, ensure tranquility, and provide for our mutual defense, promote our common welfare, and secure to ourselves and our posterity the blessings of liberty, acknowledging with grateful hearts the goodness of the sovereign ruler of the universe in affording us an opportunity. Heavenly Father, source of all life, freedom, and authority, we come before you in solemn prayer on this inauguration day of Janet T. Mills, the 75th governor of the state of Maine. We thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon our state, from its shores to its mountains, to its farms, towns, and cities. 
We ask that you continue to watch over this free state, its citizens, and its leaders, now and for many years to come. You are with us in every transition and in every change. And as we enter into this new era with excitement and even some anxiety, we recall your deep compassion, your presence, and your abounding love. We thank you for the gifts, talents, and skills which you have blessed us with. We thank you for the experiences that we have brought, that has brought us to this moment. We thank you for the work of others that gives breath and depth to our own work. Almighty God, bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning and pure manners. Save us from discord, from violence and confusion and the frailty of our own hearts. May wisdom and compassion be the stability of our times and our deepest trust in thee in whom we live and move and have our being. Come fill us with generosity as we are challenged to let go and others allow to share with us the goods and beauty of the earth. The Old Testament prophet Micah reminds our elected leaders and reminds us all of the requirements associated with leadership. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Now, Lord, open unto us light for our darkness. Open unto us courage for our fear, hope for our despair, peace for our turmoil, joy for our sorrow, strength for our weakness, wisdom for our confusion, forgiveness for our sins, love for our hates, thyself for ourself. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who hast brought us thus far on the way, thou who hast by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is our Christ, amen. Good evening. I'm not a religious leader per se, uh, but I thought it made a lot of sense to have the voice of an indigenous woman in the room tonight, and I am happy uh, to be here and share in hopes of a new era, maybe, and not because I've forgotten what's in the past, but because I'm very hopeful for the future. Thank you. To Governor Mills, to the State of Maine, and to honored guests, Indaliwizi, Molly and Dana, Nujaya Obanawapskewi, Gamachnol Zweltamultibin. My name is Molly and Dana. I am from the Penobscot Nation, and I am so thankful to be here. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I find it humbling and a true honor to be here at this event tonight. As a woman of Maine, and as a mother of two daughters, hi Carmela, hi Layla, I love you. <laughs> the excitement I feel uh, of a woman holding this sacred office is both inspiring and well overdue. Maine means a lot to me. I grew up on Indian Island, the Penobscot Nation, nestled in the center of our beautiful state. The Penobscot River not only surrounds our island, but gives us life with both the way it holds our history and protects our future. We hold ceremony at Katahdin, our sacred mountain, which watches over us and reminds us that the ancestors are always with us and ready to give us advice when we need it. Nobody can own these elements. We believe that we are from them and to them we shall return. Taking care of Mother Earth means taking care of one another. The Wabanaki nations of Maine, the Maliseet, the Mi'kmaq, the Passamaquoddy, and my home, the Penobscot, are not just the indigenous people of Maine, but also the carriers of truth of these lands and waters. 
This place is not just our homeland, it is our whole existence. When we see the terrors of environmental distress, disease, poverty, addiction, suicide, and illnesses in our communities, it spurs us to action to protect the sacred and connect with those around us to find solutions to these things that truly plague us all. There is power in unity. When tribal nations are seen as sovereign bodies, we can work better with our relationship with other governments. When indigenous people are seen as people and not stereotypes or mascots, we can build on shared humanity. You're really gonna like this next one then. <laughs> <laughs> when cities and towns take the true and honorable step of celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day on the second Monday in October. We find truth and love in our neighbors and a foundation of trust and understanding. It is all about respect, all of it. I want to thank Governor Mills for a genuine desire to listen to me during her campaign, for insight and conversation, for laughter, and for some advice. And I want to thank her for taking a stand on behalf of our people when it comes to Indian mascots in Maine before she even took office. I have hope, yeah. <laughs> I do have great hope for continued efforts to reach common ground an attempt to mend the bonds between the indigenous nations of Maine and the governing entities. This will take time, not an easy fix. It takes motivation to listen to one another. It takes a meaningful seat at the table, and it takes open hearts and minds. I come here tonight with a genuine desire for all these things, and I believe in the potential for reciprocity. In her book, Braiding Sweetgrass, Robin Wall Kimmerer, a member of the citizen Potawatomi Nation, says transformation is not accomplished by waiting at the edge. I see a lot of people in here ready to take a big plunge. I wish you all blessings on this very significant new year, and may all your transformations be the light of tomorrow. Thank you so much and all my relations. Thank you. Tonight, in this room and across the state, the citizens of Maine gather to witness a change of leadership. From the new immigrant trying to learn English, to the small business owner who worked through the holidays, from the parent who hopes that education is a way for their child to get ahead, to the child wondering how to afford care for aging parents, from the lobsterman hoping for a good day, to the small town mayor and school superintendent trying to balance the budget. Mainers are looking forward with hope and optimism and some trepidation to this new year. We have work to do. In the text of Ayikra Raba, a collection of rabbinic stories, we read of a parable told by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yoshi. A group of men were on a ship far from land. One of them took a drill and started drilling underneath him. The others were shocked. They said, what are you doing? He replied, what do you care? It is, not, it is not, is it not only underneath my area that I am drilling? They replied, but the water will rise and flood all of us on this ship. I pray in the Jewish tradition, Elohenu velohe avotenu v'imotenu, our God and God of our ancestors. May we, the citizens of the state of Maine, remember we are all on the same ship. We are a diverse... We are a diverse community with many stories and passions, but we rise or fall together. We ask your blessing upon our governor-elect. May the one who blessed the daughters of Zalofahad with the vision of a just society and the tenacity to fight for that vision 
Bless her with the patience and will to stick to her principles. May the one who blessed Batya with compassion for a supposed opponent, bless her with a spirit of curiosity and caring for all people, no matter what their background. May the one who blessed Esther with the courage of her convictions and the ability to stand up for her people, bless her with the power to speak her mind and stand up for the people of Maine. May the one who blessed Miriam with a dancing spirit bless her with moments of joy and love. And may the one who blessed Bruria with the wisdom to be the only female scholar in a study hall run by men bless her with insight, toughness, and humor as she becomes our first female governor. I close with a beautiful prayer that we in the Jewish tradition recite on special occasions or for new experiences. We recite this prayer tonight for the first day of a new administration, a new day for the state of Maine, and a historic first for women. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Praised are you, God, ruler of the universe. Shehechianu, who has given us life, the most precious of all gifts. Vikiyamanu, who has sustained us, who has kept us whole on our journey. Vihigianu lazman haza, and who has brought us to this time of joy and of hope. Amen. It is my pleasure to introduce Wesley McNair, former Poet Laureate, to read an original work created for the inauguration to the Joint Convention. <laughs> on, behalf of, <clears throat> on behalf of all Maine's poets, I want to begin by thanking Janet Mills for bringing poetry to this inauguration. <clears throat> The Song for the Unsung. Let us sing a song for the unsung, for the Maine muskrat, whose name misunderstands the beauty of its sleek tail and its small, delicate ears. And for the ground moss that brings forth tiny red blossoms each summer that we do not see, though they are right there at our feet. Let us sing for what we have overlooked, the simple faith of the gardener in an overcoat, opening the barren ground of October for tulip bulbs, and of the teacher who finds in the student's failure the opportunity to start again. And let us sing for the hopeful starting again of the doctor who sits with the repeat patient in recovery, and for the single mother who begins each day by leaving her children behind for the job that will support them, and for the immigrant father with two jobs and a dream of bringing his family to a new life in Maine, already a Mainer himself in his perseverance. For the song we will sing is not only about faith and hope, but persistence in spite of the odds. Like the tenacity of the main town moderator who read the warrant article so forcefully that he spit out his upper plate, <laughs> then caught it in midair, popped it back into his mouth, and carried on. <laughs> that unsung moderator deserves a song as does this gathering of public servants tonight, including a legislature with 72 women who have themselves persisted against the odds. <laughs> A 
and a female governor, also a poet, whose most, whose most sustained and inspiring song in the service of teachers and students, doctors and patients, parents and kids, new citizens and Mainers everywhere is about to be sung. It is my pleasure to welcome Shai Paka, Natalia Badu, the Franklin County Fiddlers, and the Portland String Quartet to offer three musical selections for this joint convention.
the girl when she's on fire. I don't like a fantasy longer than a highway. She's living in a world and it's on fire. Feel the catastrophe, but you know she could fly away.
Well, it's time to do the oath. <laughs> <laughs> Bible is being held by governor-elect's grandchildren. The governor-elect, please step forward, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Janet Trafton Mills. Do swear. Do swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and of this state. That I will support the Constitution of this state and the United States. So long as I shall continue a citizen thereof. So long as I shall continue a citizen thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I, Janet Trafton Mills. Do swear. Do swear. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. The duties incumbent on me as governor of the state of Maine. The duties incumbent on me as governor of the state of Maine. <laughs> great, great. According to the Constitution and the laws of the state. According to the Constitution and the laws of the state. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> One more. The Secretary of State, Matthew Dunlap, will come forward and read the proclamation. It is my solemn duty, distinct privilege, and one of the great honors of my life to present this proclamation given under my hand the second day of January in the year 2019 to the Joint Convention. The votes given on the sixth day of November last in the cities, towns, and plantations of the state of Maine for governor, the returns of which have been made to the office of the Secretary of State, having been examined and counted by the legislature, which has declared that a plurality thereof was given to Janet Trafton Mills that she is duly elected, and that she, having in the presence of the two branches of the legislature in convention assembled, taken and subscribed the oaths required by the Constitution to qualify her to discharge the duties of that office, I therefore declare and make known to all persons who are in the exercise of any public trust in this state, as well as all good citizens thereof, that Janet Trafton Mills is Governor and Commander-in-Chief of the State of Maine, and that due obedience should be rendered to all her acts and commands as such. God save the great State of Maine! It's hard for me to top the Secretary of State, but <laughs> it is my true honor and privilege to present the Honorable Governor of the great state of Maine, Janet Trafton Mills.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Madam Chief Justice, Madam Speaker, and Mr. President, members of the 129th Legislature and members of the state and federal judiciary and former governors, honored tribal members and chiefs and members of the military friends and family, honored guests, and those 4,346 friends of mine on Facebook. I also draw your attention, in more serious vein, to the empty chair, empty seat in the military section, which recognizes and honors all main service members who are currently deployed. It is with humility and gratitude that I stand before you this evening. I welcome you to a ceremony that represents both a change in the individual who occupies the office of the Chief Executive and, and the peaceful passing of the torch of progress. There are many in this state who are the unsung, as poet Wes McNair has called them. They are the firefighters and teachers, the techies and hotel workers, the farmers and fishermen, the waiters and loggers and the barbers and mill workers of our towns. They are our friends, our neighbors, they are immigrants and laborers, veterans, people with disabilities, people from away, people we rely on every day, and many who rely on us. This governorship is about them, the men and women of the state of Maine. This year, you know, for the first time in our state's 198-year-long history, after 74 men from York, Cumberland, Penobscot, Androscoggin counties finally you have elected a governor from Franklin County. <laughs> I am from the foothills of Maine, western Maine, which bred Margaret Chase Smith and Carrie Stevens and Cornelia Crosby, known as Fly Rod Crosby, who was the first, Maine's first registered guide in 1897, first registered guide, male or female, and who famously said, I would rather fish any day than go to heaven. Sorry. <laughs> in recent weeks, I've received many letters. Eight-year-old Lucy wrote, quote, now I feel like I could become governor someday. And the morning after the election, one mother left a note in her daughter's lunchbox. It said, Janet Mills won last night, it said. She's the first woman to be the governor in Maine ever. Think about all the things you can do. Love, Mom. I do think about all the things they can do, along with their brilliant brothers, uncles, and fathers. But truly, this milestone, this year, this milestone, this one day will be all commonplace, like drinking milk or eating toast. When future generations read of this day, they'll wonder what all the fuss was about. Sometimes our culture moves slowly in the stream of change. Streams, like the people of Maine, change direction on occasion to find the best way forward. Many days I awake to see the mist rising from the Sandy River as it steers its course across, down, the, down to the Kennebec, the winter's breath unveiling a new day in my hometown, a new day in this state. Then I hear the familiar sounds of chickadees, church chimes, and jake breaks. <laughs> this is home in Maine. The Sandy River pours out of Rangeley Lake and meanders through my town and gains momentum on its way to the Kennebec. 
and there it joins other tributaries, tributaries to become a powerful waterway, a loud home to eagles and salmon, stripers and sturgeon on its course to Merry Meeting Bay. The Sandy River connects my town to those upstream and downstream, and we become one with the rest of Maine, linked by water, woods, and land. Former Governor Joshua Chamberlain described this link back in 1876. He said, this great and wide sea, these beaches and bays and harbors, these things invite the brave, the noble. Thought comes here and dwells. They will love the land, he said, and the land will give back strength. The Wabanaki people know this bond. Their wisdom was passed along by people like Joseph Addian, legendary governor of the Penobscot Nation, a brave, open-hearted, and forbearing individual who guided Henry David Thoreau in his first moose hunt through the vast and primitive wilderness to Chisuncook Lake. The plaque that overlooks Adian Lake, named for him, reads, Rise free from care before the dawn and seek adventure. Today we rise, a new day before us, and seek adventure. <laughs> But today, our connection to the land is endangered. After 80 years of studies warning that carbon emissions are destroying our environment, the danger is now at our doorstep. The Gulf of Maine is warming faster than almost any other saltwater body in the world, driving our lobsters up the coast. Our coastal waters are growing acidic, temperatures fluctuating, the sea levels rising, endangering our shellfish industry while our forests are less suitable for spruce and fir and more suitable for ticks. Climate change is threatening our jobs, damaging our health and attacking our historic relationship to the land and the sea we love. Tonight I say enough. Enough with studies, talk, and debate. It is time to act. Our administration will embrace clean energy, change our modes of transportation, weatherize homes and businesses, and reach a goal of 50% of our electricity coming from Maine renewable resources. And these actions will create good paying jobs, preserve our environment, and welcome young people to build a green future here in Maine. And by the way, when you drive by the Blaine House in the coming weeks, look for some new solar panels that we're going to install. Why not? We need a healthy environment, and we need healthy people. Maine voters agreed, which is why they voted to expand Medicaid. <laughs> Hospitals, nurses, doctors, and business all, businesses all agree as well. Health care is for everyone, not just the well-to-do. It is for the small business. The small businesses struggling to pay high health insurance bills. It is for the family on the brink of bankruptcy because of one illness, accident, or medical mishap. It is for the community that takes up collections in a jar at the corner store to pay for a neighbor's medical costs. It is for people like my friend Patty. My friend Patty was a vibrant, intelligent, and charitable woman, an athlete, and mother of three wise children, loved by all and uninsured. She died needlessly from breast cancer, a disease that could have been diagnosed easily, early, treated, and cured. And Patty's story is not unique. Many of you have friends like Patty. This is unacceptable.
in the memory of Patty and thousands of others, our new administration will expand Medicaid and pay for it sustainably. We will work to ensure that every person has primary care. We will, we will control the cost of health insurance and rein in the cost of prescription drugs. A major part of the health care crisis is the opiate epidemic. History will note that we have abandoned an entire generation of people to, to this preventable disease. The allure of opiates can fill a hole in the human heart caused by loneliness, stress, hopeless, hopelessness. Even as I speak, there is someone within the sound of my voice about to consume a deadly drug jeopardizing themselves, their friends, their families, their communities. If that person is listening, please know that I and many others are here for you. You are not alone. We will confront this disease together. We will offer a helping hand, not pass judgment. We want you to succeed and to survive. We want to welcome you home again. <clears throat> It is time for action. Narcan, widely available, medication-assisted treatment, recovery coaches, these things will be a reality. And in sad memory of the 418 Maine people who lost their lives to drug overdose in 2017, our administration will create the Director of Opiate Response, a person who will marshal the collective power and resources of this state to stem the tide of this epidemic. Part of that effort will be to fully engage with people in our own communities. Take it outdoors, as one of our favorite retailers puts it. Renewing the healing bond we have with the land and our environment. In addition to protecting the medical health of our people, we will also advance the economic health of our people. To employers, entrepreneurs, and innovators with new ideas for forest products, aquaculture, recreation, renewables, and everything in between, I say you are welcome here. We will offer a world-class workforce. You know, fewer than half of Maine people, Maine adults, now hold a post-secondary credential, a college degree or a professional certification. Yet two out of three jobs require such credentials. This imbalance is why we have, at the same time, employers saying they can't find workers and workers saying they're stuck in dead-end jobs. Education is the key to helping our people achieve their full potential. Attracting talented young people to move here and make Maine their home will be a top priority of my administration. And from now on, yes, a sign will greet all those arriving in our state at the Kittery Line, and it will say simply, welcome home. They tell me I have to get permission from the turnpike.
work on it. I will, <laughs> I will work with the new administration, the new legislature, to achieve the best education for our people, from preschool through college and beyond, beginning with full and fair funding for our schools, including our career and technical centers. And we will treat our teachers with the respect and dignity they deserve. There's a few teachers here. Are there any teachers? McCray. There is no higher priority than our children. And with so many people still at Long Creek, with children waiting for critical mental health services, and some even losing their lives to violence in their own homes, it's high time we put children's health and safety first. I'm going to start with one simple step, calling together the children's cabinet for the first time in years to tackle these issues. Simple. Well, these are some of the challenges we know about, but we must also be prepared for the unexpected. We know that a recession is possible in the next few years. It is. We know that someday robots, drones, driverless cars, broadband, and 3D printing will radically alter the way many people live, learn, and work, and so we need to be ready. Now, I made my own predictions back at the turn of the century, the last century. In the year 1999, I wrote down a journal, of, a list, on a journal, a list of things I thought would stay in the new millennium and things I thought might go away. I predicted, for instance, in, in 50 years, there would no longer be the following things. Cash money, paper bags, spare tires, lint, <laughs> dust, and pantyhose. <laughs> but in 50 years, I said there would likely still be Stephen King bestsellers, <laughs> Baxter State Park, People from Away, and Strom Thurmond. <laughs> Anybody remember him? As you can see, I can't rely on myself too well to predict the future. That's why I'm enlisting help. I'm following the advice of writer Kurt Vonnegut, who said, quote, said a lot of things, but he also said, quote, every government ought to have a department of the future. And so my administration will create an office of innovation and the future. This office will dive into major policy changes, foster collaboration, and propose concrete workable solutions. Let's look ahead for a change. Now, here's how I want to govern, <clears throat> because we're all in this together. We all want Maine to have a beautiful environment and happy people and prosperous communities. And although we all agree on a goal, we sometimes differ on how to get there. We are Republicans, Greens, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, and so many more besides. But there's, this is something I know well myself. I mean. Every Mills family reunion is like a meeting of the United Nations. <laughs> everyone has an opinion, and everyone wants the microphone. But these differences are what make my family strong. They make every family strong. They make Maine strong. <laughs> our, our diversity is a virtue one that we should harness to advance good public debate and good public policy. 
We welcome the voices of newcomers also to the public conversation, the young, the immigrants, people of different cultures, people of color, people of different orientations, all are important members of the main family. My town, like many of yours, my town has always had a commons where everybody would graze their sheep and cattle in the old days and sell produce and open a farmer's market now and where we'd all enjoy a concert on a summer evening. Our state needs to find its common ground, expand our horizons, become one Maine again. From the tree streets of Lewiston to the rolling fields of the county, from the bold coast to the height of land, from Cross Rock and Allagash to the Portland's promenades, our people will once again find unity of purpose. We will bring back Maine's tradition of civil discourse, expressed by Governor Israel Washburn, a friend of Abraham Lincoln's, in his 1861 inaugural. He said, waving aside petty schemes and unseemly wrangles. Let us rise, if we can, to the height of the great argument which duty and patriotism so eloquently addressed to us. You know, I have fallen in love a few times in my life. There are those in this audience whom I have loved for long and for years, friends and family, and some newly loved but it is the bond we all share for our state, our children longing for security, newcomers seeking to belong, for all those who feel left behind, who long for respect and dignity. One thing we all love is our great state. And when a family, a community, a state believe in each other, help each other, love each other, great things can happen. Maine people have greatness within them. Maine is our home. We are connected by the rivers and the land, the forests and the mountains. We are connected by love. We are strengthened by those connections. We are one Maine, undivided, one family, from Callis to Bethel, from York to Fort Kent. And so we meet this evening, free from care. The heirs of Joseph Addian, Joshua Chamberlain, Flyrod Crosby, and Israel Washburn. And tomorrow, we rise before the dawn like the mist over the Sandy River and seek adventure with hope in our hearts and love in our souls for the brand new day. And to all of you and to all the people of Maine, I say, welcome home. <laughs> welcome home! The benediction will be given by Father Frank Murray. It's a great honor to be with you here this evening for this historic night. So let us conclude in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this night in which Janet Mills begins her tenure as our governor. We ask you to watch over her and guide her over the next four years. We also thank you for the many gifts which you have given Governor Mills 
especially the gift of her willingness to share her gifts with us, the citizens of the great state of Maine. We ask your blessings on her and on the team of administrators she is forming to work with her to face the challenges of our state. Compassionate God, we ask you to shower an openness on all of us as citizens of Maine to do our individual part in cooperating and addressing with the new Mills administration, budgetary, environmental, health, educational, economic, justice, and infrastructure issues. May all of Maine government, executive, legislative, and judicial know their clear roles and cooperate for the common good of all citizens. Our ancestors have known for a long, long time that we are people who can lead, as our motto claims. As the next four years unfold, Almighty God, keep us focused on the big picture, which includes all people, your will, your willingness to help us, and Governor Janet's important role. May all of us be more focused on our supportive role and the greater good than our own personal desires. Loving God, thank you for Governor Mills. Thank you for the good state of Maine. Thank you for self-government. Thank you for this new administration. And thank you for this night. Bless all these realities, and we make this prayer in your name. Amen. The purpose for which this convention was assembled having been accomplished, I now declare the same dissolved. <laughs>